Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we continue answering questions, and this one is from Kyle, KZ4PIX. Kyle has a situation where he lives on the side of a hill, and up on top of the hill is a large broadcast station. So let's take a look at his question, which comes in two parts. I am being gifted with a Comet CHA250B, which is about 23 feet high. It's a multiband vertical that does not need radials. Uh, I can mount it to a short mast up high on the house. That will place the antenna base at about 40 feet above ground. Uh, you want to get the base of those antennas at least 10 feet above ground and up on the roof, uh, that will do very well. Make sure that it is well guyed because the higher you go on the roof, and you do live on the, on the leeward slope of a, a hill, and sometimes when the wind changes, I bet you can get some mighty gusts up there. Um, now, he says he has some trees nearby but not close enough to come into contact with it. How close is too close to have a major impact on performance? How close is too close to have uh, an impact on the performance? Well, the obvious thing is if the tree is swaying around, hits the antenna and knocks it down. That has a major impact on performance. But in terms of just being a tree full of sap, it's not going to have that much of an impact uh, on the performance. If you get uh, an antenna in a very, very heavy growth of trees, yes, it can impact uh, by 3 dB or something like that. But actually putting an antenna in a tree uh, or hiding it under a tree or something like that is not a bad thing to do. You want to make sure that as the antenna moves from side to side, it doesn't pull things apart. Now, the second question is interesting. The house is on a slope that peaks about 100 feet higher than the house uh, about a, than the house about a quarter mile away. Atop the hill is a thousand foot tower for a local TV station, plus a number of other antennas. Downhill, the driveway slopes down about 70 feet to the road below the house. In general, what will be the impact of that geometry on the vertical and on my off-center fed dipole, which is the reference, and st uh, reference station antenna, which is the MFJ 2010. It's about 30 feet above the ground. It says, thanks for all, you, uh, all the great info you present. You're a real asset. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the, the second question. The first, I think, we've answered. You're fine putting it up. Just make sure it's guide strong against the wind. Now let's widen this out a little bit here so we get the whole whiteboard. There we go. Okay, now he's got, uh, he lives on a hill. The house is on a slope that peaks about 100 feet higher than the house, then another house about a quarter feet away. So there's a peak and there's a tower on there and it's for television, which is not going to impact your HF very much at all. Now this will affect patterns of HF, but not too much. Now he says that he's got about 70 feet to the road down below Okay, so we'll put his house up here, and he's up above. Now he's going to have his vertical antenna, and he's got strung up here the, uh, the 2010, which is the reference station antenna. You can get that from MFJ, or you can get it direct from DX Engineering or Ham Radio Outlet and all the usual uh, people. There aren't that many all the usual people anymore um, since uh, amateur electronic supply um, went under and they were absorbed by 
uh, ham radio outlet, they're getting to be fewer um, ham radio vendors. There are a number of second tier vendors that you'll see their ads in QST. The big ones are DX Engineering and Ham Radio Outlet. And I think DX Engineering kind of goes out of their way to have everything. Um, DX Engineering is a part of a sport car, sports car. Sports car supply house that sells things over the web. So they're all set up to have vast quantities of inventory and so on. Okay, let's look at this. The TV antenna is really not going to affect that much because it's just uh, holding up the television stuff. There would be some other antennas on it because antenna space on towers is always at a premium. Now he's got his antenna in a road down below. Now, the question was, um, you slope down. It looks like the entire property slopes down. Now, let me show you in one one simple stroke the effect this is going to have on your transmissions right there it's going to go that way it's going to tend to favor that direction but you'll be a good three to six db better this way than the other way of course you'll get out this way and this way just fine but you've got this right here, and this is, you note that the ground is here, and this is sloping right here, thus increasing this angle right here, will tend to favor, tend to favor. It's not saying it's going to or won't, but it will tend to favor this direction, whatever that direction may be. Um, <clears throat> And there's not a huge amount that you can do about that because uh, it's just the way it is. Now, if you want to use like 480 and 40, um, if you put in an NVIS antenna, your radiation will tend to go like this, and you can get the new stuff, the nearby stuff, where it hits the... Uh, uh, and 10 and it'll be above that right there also 80 meters in general tends to hug the hills quite a bit 40 doesn't always do that so i hope that helps answer your question that's going to be the general effect that you're going to have it, there are hams in every direction so you can make lots of qso's with that so especially with the sunspot starting to uh, turn around I've said starting to turn around for about two or three years now. And yeah, for an 11 year cycle, for two or three years of that, it's turning around. And then over the next two or three years, uh, we're going to start seeing some rapid improvements in what's going on. Okay, so there you are. I hope that helps. Now, um, I'd like to make an announcement I'm making in all my videos. And let me get this uh, set up here. I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. Uh, my study here, my room, is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel. And it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams in the USA. And, and I say in the USA because the shipping to other countries gets exorbitant. Um, the uh, item to be given away this time is a book. It won't always be a book. It might be an antenna or something. Um, the item to be given away this time is a book called Novel Antennas from the Radio Society of Great Britain. I think I picked it up at Dayton. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98. This is the ultimate anti-tech exercise here. 
uh, P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And yes, Ridgeway is spelled correctly. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number one, your uh, name and call sign and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. Though if you want to send a picture of you and your station, I may be able to show those during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted and you have to submit for each drawing separately. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening U.S. time on August 26th. Note that um, I pay the book shipping, so it's all totally free to you. I hope to do something like this every month. Note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. And don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.